I got a chance to witness Neuralink. I don't know if you're familiar with that company, the brain, yeah. uh, brain computer interfaces. And then they have, I got a chance to see it in person, just a bunch of pigs who had Neuralink chips implanted and taken out. And those pigs are so happy with life. I don't know, I've never seen a happier animal. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because they get to eat, you because you, you, you were mentioning sort of diets and stuff. They base pigs seem to love a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. They're they're easy. They're easily made to be happy. I don't I don't know if uh, you can comment on your thoughts of um, of you know exploring the capacity of the pig mind through some of this testing with Neuralink. Whether that's exciting to you, whether maybe on the humane side it's a little bit concerning. Um, if there's something to be said on sort of like, um, yeah, on the, I don't know if it's even the ethical side, but just because of your connection to meat and to nature and understanding these living beings. Well, pigs are incredibly intelligent, so yes. I'm not surprised that they're a subject matter for Neuralink. Yeah. Um, they're smarter than dogs and they're empathetic and emotional. Um, and they're, we'll go look at our pigs afterwards and see, but they're, they're, they're kind of like joyful and exuberant when they're in good health. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that makes sense. I, I'm i interested in open. I feel um, that the kind of bleeding edge agriculture movement that I'm, you know, on the edge of in some ways, we're a larger operator, but we as a movement have to, we have to get into the game. We have to move forward in a way that allows us to scale if we want to be viable. Mm -hmm. So I think there has to be openness to how that can happen. Yeah. And I also think there needs to be more thoughtful and noisy data about how regenerative ranching can sequester carbon. Mm -hmm. I mean, thousands of, of American ranches are selling carbon credits right now. The data is that valid. And they're not selling carbon credits from like grassland that's just got a fence around it. Mm -hmm. They're selling carbon credits for verified data from animals assisting in carbon sequestration. Right, so there's got to be a way to to get the tech community involved in ways to help regenerative agriculture scale in different creative ways. And yeah. actually, yeah, that'd be interesting if like Neuralink somehow has, I mean, especially because Elon Musk is involved and Kimball Musk is like has his whole effort and appreciation of regenerative agriculture. That I wonder if Neuralink has a role to play, like exploring the the neurobiology of the animal if that somehow will create innovations that uh, lead to uh, improved uh, scaling of regenerative agriculture. That'd be interesting. But you, you're saying you should be open to all those possibilities. I don't think, I don't know the landscape to know what. Yeah. But my sense is that it's very hard. It's very hard. And our farming operation to scale has been incredibly complex and challenging. We now work with partner farms, I see their operations, they're incredibly complex. You know, it just seems like there's got to be a way to make some of these things simpler and easier to share information. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that answer, I, answer it, is. You know what would be cool is if we can understand deeper ways to measure the happiness of an animal, because then we can optimize, mm -hmm. like uh, certified humane could be literally an optimization problem. Just make sure as opposed to kind of uh, using our, projecting our, our own human values, actually measuring what the, what the animal is happy mm -hmm. doing. That could be, so understanding the pig brain might help us understand pig happiness and like reframe what it means for a happy animal. And then maybe it's a lot easier to make a happy animal, to make the animal happy than we think.